I found this round display perfect for building such a simple smartwatch that obtains the time and the outside temperature values over Wi-Fi connection. In this video, I am going to show you guys the way of getting the time using SNTP over TCP socket connection and getting the temperature value over MQTT connection with the help of Node-RED that is running on my Raspberry Pi. ESP32 firmware size, partition organization are going to be discussed as well. We are also going to see how this user interface is designed using LVGA library and SquareLine Studio, so we cover both back-end and front-end firmware. We have got a lot to display today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before, with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Link is in the description. Alright, so here's my setup from the previous tutorial. I'm still using uh, the ESP32 S3, uh, deriving this round display, but this time I'm showing uh, the current time. Uh, and the temperature value on this screen and here I'm having an icon to show uh, whether my MCU is connected uh, over Wi-Fi to my network so here the time value I'm getting it from uh, SNTP simple network uh, timing protocol which requires nothing but uh, TCP socket connection uh, and here I'm having the temperature value I'm getting it uh, from uh, an API, but over MQTT connection, I will show you I, how I've done that. So here I don't have uh, HTTP uh, request to obtain this value from the API. And here I'm having uh, a continuous uh, animation showing every second on the screen. Uh, of course, uh, currently the rotary encoder uh, has no functionality. I'm planning to add the menu uh, to this screen. Uh, and this uh, rotor encoder will be used in order to navigate the menu options. All right, so here I've put my phone uh, next to the watch that we have here in order to see how synchronized uh, the time is right now. Uh, let me tell you that uh, this clock has been running for around a day uh, and the time is still precise. There's no uh, differ in the time. And now we can have a look at the temperature uh, currently it's 13 because I'm getting the data from uh, Open Weather API. Of course, all this data, uh, we can see it from uh, the ESP32 uh, software. All right, so now let's see from the beginning uh, how the MCU is going to behave when we reboot it. Okay, so now there's no time data and we see that there's no uh, Wi-Fi connection. This is some dummy uh, temperature value. Yes, now we see the temperature is, has been updated and the time uh, is now synchronized and the Wi-Fi connection is active. So now let's jump into the code and see how I have implemented uh, this interface uh, and see the way how I'm obtaining the time temperature data from the Wi-Fi connection. All right, so here's the firmware running on the ESP32 S3. Uh, and now let's start with the main. First of all, we have the display driver configuration with the LVGL uh, library integration. I've explained that part in the previous tutorial where we were talking about rotor encoder interface. So first, free autos task created here uh, is the wireless initialization task uh, where I'm having the uh, Wi-Fi connection where I'm passing my SSID uh, and the network uh, password for the ESP32 to connect my Wi-Fi network and after that I'm initializing the MQTT in order to connect to an MQTT broker that's running on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So the thing here, uh, after completing the initialization, uh, this task will be deleted but of course any callback or interrupt will be handled by uh, Core uh, Zero. So I'm giving uh, Core Zero to handle all uh, radio frequency related uh, operations 
After that, I'm having LVGL timer handler task uh, run on core one. This was explained in a previous tutorial. Uh, after that, I'm putting a delay of uh, 15 seconds in order to wait uh, to the Wi-Fi network to get connected so I can run the MQTT uh, message parser task, which uses the free RTOS uh, queue uh, that's going to hold uh, the packets received over MQTT so they can be uh, parsed later on. Of course, after making sure that the MCU is connected to the Wi-Fi network, uh, I'm using this SNTP configuration function uh, that's responsible for configuring the simple network time protocol, which will allow us to get the time-related data uh, over TCP connection. So here, in order to get the SNTP uh, initialized, uh, first we set the time zone, uh, and after that we set the server that we are going to uh, get the uh, time-related data from and then the SNTP uh, got initialized so let, let's get back to our main alright so after having the SNTP uh, configured let's have a look at the real-time handling task this task is going to run uh, once every second uh, so first of all uh, the data will be read from the RTC timer and then get converted to time structure which will have seconds, minute, hour and other date related parameters. After that the obtained data will be converted into a string that's going to be printed later on uh, on the round display in the form that we have seen. In addition to that here I'm having a counter uh, that's going to count while this uh, task is running and after passing one hour, uh, an MQTT publish request will be sent uh, to the MQTT broker so I can get uh, the related information related to the temperature. Let me show you the node red block uh, flow uh, so you have a better understanding. So here I am having, so this is the part related to the application that we are uh, implementing today. This was related to the IoT lamp that I've implemented before. I will put a link to that tutorial in the card that will be shown here. So here I'm having an MQTT uh, input. So when the ESP32 publishes uh, a request, the node red will do an HTTP request uh, in order to obtain data uh, from the Open Weather API. And then the obtained API will be filtered out using this block. And then only the temperature will pass uh, through this block. And then it will be published uh, to this uh, topic, to the temperature topic, which the ESP32 is subscribed to. Uh, so here, as you can see, uh, the ESP32 uh, had uh, a publish request in order to obtain the temperature data, and this, and then this will be sent to the ESP32 through this topic. So now let's get back to our firmware uh, and see the MQTT partial task, uh, and we have it just over here. So this free RTOS queue will hold all the data received uh, over uh, MQTT. I've already explained the MQTT layer that I have over here. You can go through it or uh, have a look at the uh, IoT LAMP uh, project that I've implemented before. Here I am using the same implementation. So uh, in the main, depending on the received event type, whether it's broker connection, disconnection, or data received over MQTT topic, uh, we will take different action. So here, so here I am setting the Wi-Fi icon uh, indicator uh, to turn into red to indicate that uh, Wi-Fi connection has been established. Uh, and then I'm publishing uh, this request in order to obtain the temperature data once broker connection uh, has been established. In case of disconnection, uh, the icon will get uh, to gray color again. Uh, and in case of uh, data received, which is the temperature data, uh, the temperature string uh, will be prepared and then uh, print on the screen uh, with the LVGL library. So here what I'm doing actually is that I'm passing the data received over the MQTT server and passing a target string in order to store uh, the form, the string that's going to be printed on the screen, adding this temperature unit uh, to the string and getting rid of the floating point of the temperature value. And after that, the prepared string is passed to the uh, LVGL library where it's uh, printed uh, on the screen as a label. All right, so right now let's have a look at the Square Line Studio program, the one that I'm using for uh, user interface design. I've talked about this program before, but let me share with you the experience that I've learned. So let's start with the uh, first panel, where here I'm having a background. You can add it from here. You can add any picture and all the necessary converting will be done. So here all you need is to select uh, the background you want. So here I can select uh, this one, for example. 
Uh, however, the disadvantage of this uh, option is that uh, this will make the uh, total image size of the ESP32 firmware quite large. You can have a look at this. The image size that I have here is close to 1.8 uh, megabytes, which is quite large uh, for such application. This happens because when generating the source files uh, of this project, the following file will be generated. Let me show you. Uh, so here I have the image uh, source file and all the raw data uh, will be loaded to the flash. As you can see here, it's nothing but an array uh, with a constant uh, uh, attribute. So uh, this data will be loaded to the uh, ESP32 external flash and that will of course occupy a lot of size. So to be able to load uh, such a large image size uh, to my ESP32, uh, I've used uh, a custom uh, partition table. So here in the VS Code, you can see uh, the partition table that I'm using. Uh, so first of all, I, here I have the non-volatile storage partition. The ESP32 uses it uh, to store some parameters. Uh, and here I have the OTA data uh, partition. This can be deleted actually because I don't have any uh, OTA uh, partitions in my firmware, which is over the air uh, update. And here we have the physical initialization uh, partition. This is used in order to store some parameters related to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And here the factory partition. Here is where my uh, firmware will be loaded. Uh, so here's the offset uh, in the North flash memory. And here's the maximum size that I can reach for my application, 2 megabytes. In order to enable custom partition table, uh, we need to head to the uh, menu config of the ESP32, uh, let me show you. All right, so here I have the uh, idf.py uh, menu config. You can access it uh, from the uh, command prompt. So uh, the first thing we need to head to the partition table. Uh, and then here uh, in the first option, we need to select uh, custom uh, partition table. There are several options to choose from. Uh, and after that, we need to give the name of the partition table that we are uh, going to use. And the rest, of course, is preparing a proper uh, partition table file for the ESP32. All right, so now let's get back to the uh, Square Line Studio uh, for the user interface design. So we have seen that the image size was uh, large because of the background with that we have selected here. There's actually a workaround, uh, and we can do that by selecting a smaller image let me show you. So we are going to use this pattern, uh, number three, and I'm going to enable this option, background image tiled. Uh, this will actually uh, multiply the same uh, pattern all around the background. So we have a full wallpaper here using a very small uh, image. So now let me transfer this to the code and see the total image size of the ESP32 firmware. All right, so here I have loaded the new background. As, as you can see, this is actually one single image. And this pattern is printed everywhere uh, in order to form this background. Uh, and the uh, image size of the ESP32 firmware has dropped uh, from 1.8 uh, megabytes to 1.1 megabytes, which is quite significant. So I find this uh, as a very good solution for code size optimization. And here in the Espressive IDE, we can see the new image size uh, of the ESP32 firmware. So here's the Square Line Studio exported code uh, that was generated. And here in the second panel, we see that uh, this, uh, the pattern number three, is used to form the background. So let's get back to the Square Line Studio and continue uh, the user interface design. All right, so the second thing to talk about is the arc. Uh, you can add any arc from the basic widget. Uh, and in the one that I've used, I selected the, the range to be 360, so I can have a complete circle, just like this. Uh, and the value of the arc uh, can be sent from the code, or you can select a default value. So uh, I can uh, increment it and decrement it uh, in order to show the animation of the seconds. And of course, inside the code, I'm toggling this mode to be between normal and reverse uh, in order to be able to display the animation that I have shown you. Of course, the color parameters and uh, the knob uh, can be modified from the options here. All right, so the last thing to talk about is the last panel here. So I have it in a circular shape because uh, I've set a radius to be 360 
as you can see here and of course you can change the color as as you want uh, so the thing to mention here is that i've added uh, these uh, texts in order to show the time the temperature uh, and the wi-fi connection icon so this was not actually a big deal but the good thing here is that I can uh, add any font that I want and it's actually a wise uh, font here so I downloaded this from a font website uh, in TTF format uh, and then added it uh, using this option add asset and in the font manager you can select the font size and the characters that you want to include inside your font library and it will generate the necessary source file that you can import in your code and use it right away so this was actually a great feature. So yeah, this was all regarding the user interface design. Uh, I hope that you have learned something new from me. Of course, all the code will be shared in the GitHub repository. Uh, you can download it from there uh, and play with it. The link will be shared in the uh, video description. Uh, so this brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please like this video, share it among your friends and tell them about useful electronics. Stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial and bye bye.